Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursali Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Yang dihormati our respected speaker Dr. Siti Nur Wahida Shukri All participants Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And welcome to Breakthrough Business Mind with EDC I am Adam Arif, first year student from Ahmad Ibrahim Kudia of Laws And I am and I am honored to be the MC for today let us begin with the recitation of Umar Fukhain al Fatiha. Distinguished guests, we are about to begin. To all participants, please record your attendance. Link is available in the chat room in Zoom and IUM official YouTube channel. Distinguished guests, Alhamdulillah. So the objective of this talk series is to provide valuable insights to entrepreneurship principles and strategies for achieving success. Introducing Dr. Siti Nur Wahida Shukri, the visionary behind the prayer mat and a distinguished alumni of IIUM. Dr. Wahida, an assistant professor, brings her expertise to the vibrant academic community at UBD School of Business and Economics in Brunei Darussalam where she passionately contributes to the field. With that, I would like to pass the floor to Dr. Wahida. The floor is yours. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, um, host today, okay. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm basically um, having this Zoom session from Brunei Darussalam. So it's same time, not like in Saudi Arabia before. Okay, so before we start, um, thank you very much to those who are joining. I could see the number of participants increasing and that is where my nervousness keep coming. <laughs> all right. Um, I hope that all of you can hear me better. I hope that my connection is good. Um, it's all good. Can you guys hear me? Yes, doctor. You do. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay. All right. Um, so before we start, it's not like a normal lecture. I used to conduct lecture because I am academician by profession. All right. But then today, the invitation by Entrepreneurship Development Center of IIUM is basically um, uh, having me today to share my uh, companies, which is the Prayer Max and the Amber Journey, on what it takes until now. Okay. And at the same time, I'm also an academician. Or I think some of us here is basically academics as well. All right, so before I start, just let me give um, some overview about the company first before I go into details about myself, okay? Uh, no, I explain about myself first before I go into details about my companies, okay? Um, by profession, I am an assistant professor in accounting and finance, okay? Um, I did my master degree in UIA. My bachelor degree is also in IIUM, so I'm basically an alumni to... Garden of Knowledge and Virtue, right? Since matriculation center. And then uh, my bachelor degree, I completed in 2008, all right? And then I proceed with my master degree from UIE as well um, in 2011, all right? And then I joined University of Malaysia Police because they sponsored me when I did my master in IIUM. So um, in 2011 till 2019, I was with uh, University of Malaysia Police, okay? Um, as a uh, senior lecturer, okay? And then I did my PhD part-time in UUM. 2019, I left um, Unimap um, to Saudi Arabia, joined University of Ha'il, all right? Um, it's basically close to Medina region, but it is Ha'il region, right? Uh, for four years, okay? And then until last year, uh, August 2023, I joined a university, uh, Brunei Darussalam, uh, under the School of Business and Economics, where I am right now, right? And then um, in my second year, uh, when I was in Saudi, right, uh, I met this business accidentally anyway, the prayer mats. Um, that one uh, happened during COVID-19, okay, where there is a restriction uh, worldwide um, and our pilgrims cannot, um, you know, perform umrah and so on. So that is how it started basically, right? So at the same time, okay, um, being an academics, but I also uh, operate my business remotely for the past four years. 
um, not any single days that I managed to, you know, uh, to operate my business in a daily basis because I think I have a good team to run it for me. Okay, so where I going to, to, um, you know, share today. Okay, um, so just a little overview about um, the company. Okay, I'm not sure. Um, you know whether you know or not uh, the prayer mat or not, but that's my responsibility to explain. Um, the prayer mat is in the Amber Heart. Um, is a basically companies are registered in Malaysia lah. Okay. Um, two thousand nineteen we registered that. All right. Uh, now we have uh we have registered the business in Singapore as well. Not to to avoid this confusion. So we have what we started in Malaysia. Okay. Two thousand nineteen. Right under the name of the prayer mat in the Amber Heart. Okay. Um. The first day I set up the business, okay, um, first thing first that I did is basically get my business registered. I never do business uh, on an illegal basis in a way, uh, nak buat business, uh, terus je uh, berniaga dulu, you tak register ke apa ke tak ada. So what we did is that, what I did is that um, the first day I set in my mind that I want to do this business, I get my business registered legally. Um, so I choose to set, to incorporate the company under the company's um, type, which is in the number high. Okay, um, how it was started, actually, masa tu during um, Ramadan 2022, uh, sorry, 2022 pula, Ramadan 2020, okay. Um, I went to Masjid Al-Nabawi and my friend is a professor in, in the same university in Saudi. Um, she actually gives me the Sejadah Raudah. Okay, that is how it started lah. She, she gave me the Sejadah Raudah. It's the same that you see in the screen eh, in the picture here, the green one. Okay, and that was my first time seeing Sejadah Raudah. Those who have been to Mecca and Medina, of course, they know. But for me, I did know um, how does the Sejadah Raudah looks like. And I don't even know the Sejadah Raudah is basically in existence. Right. And but but then I, I know that that sejadah is really beautiful, a very good quality because it's a carpet quality um, and it's thick. So it's very comfy when we pray. All right. Uh, and then I posted it to my Instagram. OK, because I'm very social media <laughs> savvy kind of person. So I'm social media attached, basically. So I posted it to my Instagram. And surprisingly, there are a lot of my friends are basically, you know, um, likes the sejada. And then they say, Wahida, where did you get that? I say, oh, I didn't know that this is so popular. So uh, my friend, because my husband used to, when I was in Saudi, I just live with my uh, children, two children. Okay. Uh, my husband is not with me in Saudi Arabia. So uh, every time my husband come, he used to come um, once in a... 45 days, something like that. <laughs> All right. So he used to come regularly lah, to Saudi. So every time he, um, you know, go back to uh, Malaysia, so he used to bawa lah all the sejadah uh, in his luggages. All right. Um, but then at the time, I ambil the order, all right, from my friends. Uh, but then they have to pay me the shipping cost lah, okay, because the shipping cost too quite uh, expensive juga. Okay. And then every time my husband uh, brought back, okay, is always like uh, 100 pieces, 200 pieces, okay, so dah tak boleh nak accommodate the luggage anymore. Um, so from there, I think that would be the opportunity for me lah to venture into the business. So that is how it started. It's actually, I used to call it, it's like a gift of love from my friend to me, but then later on, it turns into an opportunity which I shouldn't lose it. I know that at the time, at that, at that point of time, I know that this business, if you do, is not going to be sustained, Wahida. Because you can only operate that during the COVID-19 restriction where people cannot go to Mecca and Madinah so they couldn't get that sejadah. But then after that, I have to to be ready in a way, your business cannot be sustained, you tak boleh jual because those people, the moment uh, they go to Mecca, Madinah, why they want to buy from you, you know, the price and, and so on. And then the feeling of having, of buying it in Haramain may be different than you buy in Malaysia. So I know that it's not going to be sustained lah at the point of, of, of time. But then I'm still doing it. Uh, and then I keep posting, posting because I love entrepreneurship so much. Before um, I went to Saudi, okay, I used to be uh, an active speaker to government agencies uh, for entrepreneurship trainings. Uh, so um, that entrepreneurial mind is already in me. 
So I said, I don't want to lose this opportunity. I want to do this business. I want to do this business. It's just that I don't know how it could be either big or small or just like a lifestyle um, businesses. All right. So um, from there, I started taking orders and then keep sending. And then my husband cannot take with the luggage anymore. So what we do is that we have to ship um, using the Saudi post at the time. Um, and then every time we ship, okay, using the Saudi post, it's like two boxes, three boxes. Um, and then we realized that in one month, we can even ship like 1,000 pieces to, to 2,000 pieces. So it's, it's really big until when we reach our fourth month in operation, I've realized that we have reached our first uh, millions uh, revenue. So from that, Okay, I don't think that the business should be a lifestyle uh, uh, lifestyle businesses anymore because I always have these two in mind. If you want to do business, number one, um, you have to choose your level of business. Okay, you want to do this based on the lifestyle entrepreneur or high growth entrepreneur. I always have that in mindset. So uh, since we already reached 1 million and I don't think that um, you know, reaching 1 million, doing part-time remotely, you're not in Malaysia is something that you should take this uh, lightly. So because of that, I said I have to be serious in doing this business. I want to make sure that my business become a high growth one. All right. So from there, we develop the vision and mission for the business. Lah. This is what normally entrepreneurs do. Whenever you set up your business, you mesti akan ada you punya vision, you, you nak jadi apa, what you want to be in the next 10 years, 5 years and so on. So I do that, but then I don't have a strategic team. I ada operational team sahaja, which is uh, my warehouse team, my bakers, okay, uh, my supervisor, uh, my warehouse supervisor. So I tak ada from the strategic level at the time. So it's basically just one man show lah from my side, which... I was in Saudi Arabia. So not any, um, I think it's been operated like almost one year. I tak pernah ada lah masa, masa I buat business tu. Okay, but then I leave it to my husband and also our good friend, uh, Dr. Zakimi. So he is basically um, helping us lah to do the hiring. Okay, uh, the first manager that we hired at the time was um, our warehouse manager because um. When we start, when we started the business, okay, our problem is we have a lot of orders. We have a lot of orders. To one extent, we have to stop the website. We have to close the website temporarily because we couldn't cope with the orders anymore. And that happened during COVID as well. So the restriction from the our government is also there. So we couldn't like uh, operate like uh, essential businesses like at the time. So what we have to do is that in order for us to process the existing order, we have to to close the website temporarily. So um and then we don't have a good proper system to process the order. Um, I think when we process the order, courier sheet dulu pun kita uh, kita tak. I think we tulis tangan je, okay? We 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 fill in the courier ship tu manually, okay? We didn't know that we need a system from the website to generate directly. So from there, I have to think uh, strategically how do I help my team there? Because in Saudi Arabia, I'm shouting like, uh, you know, Saudi is actually uh next. Uh, you know, Saudi to much up close lah. It's very close to to me and something like that. So I didn't sleep when I was in Saudi because I cannot simply balik just to to operate this business. So that uh, but then I cannot deliver. Okay, um, what my staffs have to do. Okay, my staff have to do. Um, from there I have to set up my own um uh, e-commerce. So masa tu um. Instead of pakai Google Form, Google Form doesn't work at all to process the order. Uh, WhatsApp cannot. You receive a lot of messages, okay, uh, a lot of orders from the uh, customers through WhatsApp. You tend to overlook everything. You tak process pun order, yet these people already paid and so on. Um, so, I take three hours to set up our first e-commerce, um, which is, uh, we're still using it right now, uh, the prayer mat malaysia.com, where it is basically open soft or software. Um, we have to pay like 280 ringgit per month, okay, but everything is there, okay, it's just that you have to set up your store, make sure until uh, the payment get away ready lah, so that the customer can make a purchase there. So I said that I took like three hours to set up the, that e-commerce because I need to simplify um, the operational work for my team. So from there, the customers, if you want to buy, 
you can buy from that website instead of texting us, WhatsApp us because I couldn't reply anyone that at, at, at that point of time. So um, I set up the website. I remember I took three hours to set up the website. I just put whatever picture that I have. Uh, if you want to buy this one, uh, this, this is this. Nothing fancy about that website at all. Okay, But then I don't have a picture to show how our... Um, you know, a, a website looks like before because now it's, it's nice already because I have team to manage it for me. Um, and then uh, what, what I had in mind at the time, you have to set up that website so that your customer can buy uh, from the website without texting you. Okay. Um, and then I have to find out because I, I'm not from IT background. I've never had the experience to set up the website, but I have to do it. I studied that one, okay, but I managed to within three hours. Oh my god, my my web my websites really works lah at the time. So customer pun boleh membeli, which is masa tu customer kita is basically our uh, B two B customers lah. Um, because we do based on dropshipping model, so our customers is basically our dropshipper. So it is falls under the B two B category, right? So uh, my dropshippers masa tu oh, oh okay lah wahida the website works we can buy from there. So the moment kita kita tak ada soft launch ke apa ke semua semua the moment I title website I ready je Terus I punya dropshippers tu Membeli dan buat, that is where Kita punya order dah penuh Satu hari you boleh dapat sampai 200-300 Order and then per order is like 2-3 pieces so sampaikan Stock pun dah dah tak ada dah Mix up haywire semua masa tu But then my success story is that I dah berjaya develop satu E-commerce lah pada waktu tu Okay and then Um Without any knowledge, that is the problem. Tak ada knowledge tapi nak buat. But I, 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 I did it lah. Right. And then uh, second thing is that when we receive the order, we have to process. Okay, nak post kan because it's, it's e-commerce. You can post uh, you punya parcel and so on. Masa tu we didn't know that there is an integration, API integration between the um, shipping companies with the e-commerce that you set up and so on. So I take like 40 minutes to study. Uh, I Google, macam mana nak integrate e-commerce. So, everything is on Google. Masa tu tak ada chat GPT lagi. Okay, so Google je macam mana I nak integrate my e-commerce to the shipping company so that my team, the moment receive order, they just print out the, the courier sheet. So, that's also happened within 40 minutes and I ask uh, my uh, operation manager um, to try the system and it works. So, masa tu dah reduce burden everyone dah. Kalau tak dulu, kita pakai uh, masukkan dalam Excel semua uh, nama customers, that's a template lah where shipping company provide and then you masukkan uh, email address, you masukkan phone number and then um, apa address and then you masukkan dalam template dia, kita masukkan lah dalam uh, shipping company punya website to generate the courier sheet. That was manual lah to me even though it's an Excel. Right, so manual. In fact, it can actually generate it from your e-commerce saja. So that is where we we um you know that that's what happened lah at the early um stages masa I set up the business dulu. Okay, so from there I know that this is going to be something uh, challenging, but yet I want to do this. Okay, so I set up the vision mission of the business. Okay, so we um basically uh, set. Product apa yang kita nak focus because we receive a lot of questions like Wahida, if you really want to grow this business, you want to focus only on one product because our company's name is The Prayer Mat. Okay, we applied for the trademark pun also The Prayer Mat, meaning that by right, your company can only sell The Prayer Mat because it goes by in names, The Prayer Mat. Okay, but then I said there, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the only product that we can sell is the prayer mat. I know that the moment you pergi, oh, kedai you ada sejadah je. That's the only product that you have, but that's true. If you go to our outlets that we have, okay, we have um 11, uh, sorry, it's 15 outlets together with our, 16 outlets together with our resellers, okay, right now. Um, the moment you step in our store, you realize that memang kedai dia jual sejadah je. And I, I'm very confident that we could do that in a way that you have to be, uh, you have to specialize, okay, what your business wants to do. So I had that in mind. It's okay, dekat Madinah, Mecca, the moment kita masuk, memang kedai tu dia jual sejadah je. Yeah, they very successful, right? So um, I said that, okay, it's okay. Our product is totally um, sejadah, the prayer mat from Madinah. Okay, but then we bring some Haramain uh, merchandises that is um, uh, uh, compatible with our existing product, which is Sejadah. So you are the professional 
So basically now our product range is we have sejadah with 90% of our product is basically the prayer mats lah. Right, but then we also have the perfume fragrances for our uh, prayer mat. Um, and then we do have seasonal product which is uh, kurma ajwa alia. We only uh, market that during Ramadan sahaja. Uh, that was also good for us. Right, and then um, we have um, some tasbis lah from Medina and Middle East. Okay. So that is our product until now. That will be our product lah. Kita tak ada product lain yang lain, vertical product lain tak ada. Okay. Uh, it's just that this year we have a um, new product line. But within the within the carpet juga, uh, we do the most installation punya carpet. Okay. Right. So that is our product. Okay. So this is the story, um, gift of love that my friend gave. Okay. This is actually the sejadah that she gave me. So I tak tahu pun sejadah raudah lah pada waktu tu. But it's very nice. Okay. I love it. I still use it right now. It's very thick one. Um, sejadah raudah ni popular because dulu di Masjid Nabawi, um, if we go to raudah area, only raudah area yang ada sejadah hijau, uh, sorry, yang ada kapat hijau macam ni, design yang macam ni. Um, I think after 2018, barulah the most tukar. Uh, sekarang kalau kita pergi Masjid Nabawi, memang semua hijau je kita tengok. Kalau dulu, selain daripada kawasan Raudah, it's all red carpet. Okay. Uh, Raudah punya area sahaja warna hijau. That what makes sejadah Raudah special lah at the time. And masa I started the business tu, I already made my market study anyway. Um, there are a lot of existing um, sellers of sejadah Madinah for Uh, in Malaysia, too many. They are selling at retail level. Too many. I did study. I I I um search um in Shopee, okay, in Instagram, um, even the e-commerce website sendiri, um Facebook. There are a lot of of existing sellers of sejadah raudah at the time, okay. So I have to think ahead. Um, how do I enter the the the, the market, okay? Because you baru nak market kalau entrepreneur kita baru. But the moment we want to enter the market, it's not easy for us. Lah. The barrier of entrance is there. Okay, um, so what I did is that since uh, during COVID, those existing sellers are basically stopped sekejap. Okay, because they don't have access to the um, middleman in Madina because so many shops closed during COVID. Okay, so um, tapi I tetap buat because I was there. So the, the, the opportunity is there for me. So instead of these people, they tak boleh nak order from the middleman, I am the one who supplied to them. Macam itulah. So even though dia dah exist dalam market, I supply. It's just that I dapat small margin je. Okay, small margin sahaja. So that harga I samalah dengan middleman yang orang used to take. Okay. And then from there, um, the factory realized, eh, how come during COVID tak ada orang order, the shop all closed. But this one lady still keep ordering from us. Okay, sampaikan uh, the first order is basically satu container where the whole world stop and suddenly she ordered from the factory. So, uh, I remember whenever I go to the factory, the factory is two hours from Masjid Nabawi. Okay, this is in Yambuk region. So, uh, I remember the CEO of the factory was telling me that you really, um, you know, um, give us some lights. Okay, we are in the dark at the time, but suddenly you order because I not only order one container. After I order one container, one month after that, I actually order from them um, six container of 20 foot, meaning that is 12 container, uh, sorry, six container of 40 foot long, meaning that 12 containers which the value was 2.7 million real. So, the kilang macam tak ada orang order and then suddenly this lady order macam tu lah. So, the moment I order banyak macam tu, what I had in mind, I actually want to penetrate the market of sejadah raudah in Malaysia by being the wholesaler. So, I um, basically sell my product okay at the wholesale uh, punya level lah. Okay, so so that is how I started. Instead of not compete dengan existing reseller, uh, why not you are basically selling to these people with even cheaper price than the one that they get from the middleman. So that is how it started. And then I have my um, drop shipper. I have a lot at the time. Uh, 20 was started with me and then now we grow to more than 1,000 um, drop shippers already lah. Okay. And then I always have this, okay, exploring the balancing act of settling down for less or starving for more. It's something like, um, you know, um, you want to settle for less ke, you want to do more, okay? Of course, there is um, cost and benefits to it, lah, right? But then um, being an entrepreneur educator, okay, um, 
I I think the opportunity tak datang just like that. Even though it is accidental, but that accidental opportunity, if we really take it as a golden for us, that goal can also turn into a valuable goal lah. Macam tu lah I have in mind at the time. So I um said, it's okay. Um, I want to make sure that this business become a high growth um, business. Okay. Because um kita ada banyak businesses dalam Malaysia yang set up the business, okay, um, tapi dia tak sustain, okay, dia tak sustain. Kita set up business but then after 10 to 20 years, kita tengok, oh, the business is no longer there, okay, no longer there. So, it's a really big challenge lah, okay, big challenge in a way, macam mana you nak sustain that, that, that. That business. So I daripada tahun pertama, tahun kedua, tahun ketiga, tahun keempat, I always like um, observe my business. I I always have the worry even until now, until today. Okay, Wahida, your business can sustain or not? Okay. So uh, daripada tahun pertama nak masuk tahun kedua, um, I was observing it. Okay, and then I think, okay, you when you go to the second year, um, the business is still there, and then there are so many improvement you have done to the uh, to the business. So I nampak dia ada potential. So when it comes to the third year, um, I see it's going to the right direction already because. Bila kita set up business ni, I set macam ni je. Kalau within first three years, you could not survive, it's very hard for you to survive further. Okay, but then we already completed our third year. Okay, so this is where we have to change our strategy. Instead of being a startup, we have to start scaling it up. Even though not in a big um, growth, but at least we show some growth lah. So, because of that, um, okay, then I said in my mind, okay, when you finish in Saudi, Wahida, you have to come back, run your business 100% full time and so on. But then I made a promise to you, BD, I have to come. So I couldn't be there to manage my business um, full time. So what I did is that um, I set up my own team. Okay, I um, my general manager that I have right now, she is actually my human resource and admin manager. Okay, but then she know what is the direction of the business that we already set up. So, um, I promoted her from the HR and administrative manager to the general manager. So, the moment I have the general manager, she can be my right hand man lah basically. So, until now, she's still with us, all right? And then, um, many questions that I receive is, Wahida, your business is already there thriving, okay? Um, why you still be, be an academician, all right? Um, I always read myself as an educational leader, all right? Um, in a way that, well, I need one platform. Dulu, I jadi very active entrepreneurial speaker with PNB, PUNB, SSM, um, Sandabi, okay, whatever. Um, most of the government agencies uh, used to um, invite me as the entrepreneurship speaker, okay? So, I mengajar orang, I educate orang on how to build the business, yet I don't even have one. So now, since this is accidental come to you, I have to make sure that this is really my educational um, platform um, for my students juga, for my trainee juga, okay? So, I don't want to go out from this academic because this is a legit platform for me to share and I love to see my students to become a graduate preneur. Okay, yang tu that is always with me even when I was in, in Unimap before. Okay, so I need the platform, legit platform to get our graduates today to become an entrepreneur. Okay, um, because Kita tak boleh nak rely on um, employed by the multinational companies, nak kerja dengan government and so on. Because to wait for our graduate to be employed to actually take some time. Kadang-kadang setahun, dua tahun belum dapat kerja lagi. But if you have that entrepreneur in mind, you tend to be a very opportunistic punya, punya person. So I need this platform is actually as my educational experiment tools. Okay, but bukanlah... Uh, satu business yang runcit punya level bukan satu um, business yang macam I sebut tadi lah high growth punya business that I can implement every single system that is needed in the business so that orang yang belajar in my class okay because like right now in UBD I'm teaching entrepreneurial finance so entrepreneurial finance is basically the course that is designed uh, for the students 
to know how to fundraise the capital, okay, and then to understand um, the fundraising punya ecosystem. So that is one, one of it, right? So I need that. And, and then the moment I'm teaching in the class, it's not about the academic per se. It's about the real experiment. So that is why I'm still being a teacher. I mean, I used to call myself teacher, okay? Right, so I set up the high growth entrepreneur and you have to know lah uh, what does it mean by high growth entrepreneur. Um, kita kalau kita berniaga dekat TikTok, for example, kita sell, uh, kita ada satu uh, product that we know the moment kita launch the product, everyone wants to buy. So since kita individual, kita uh, seorang-seorang buat business, kita come up with the product. Uh, this is normally happen to cosmetic punya entrepreneur. Contohnya lah, you jual foundation, for example. Okay, so you manage to have like 10,000, 20,000 uh, pieces of of of, of apa, foundation tadi kan. Okay, so you manage to sell on TikTok. Okay, and then you manage to get maybe sekali you launch, you dapatlah sales um, rm ringgit ke rm ringgit. Okay, but then you stop there. You stop there, you dah dapat order, you process and then you buat fulfillment sampailah customer you terima lah that product. Okay, but then you hanya menjual sahaja. Okay, you you menjual sahaja. Meaning that you are not entrepreneur, you are salesman. Okay, this is what I always highlight. Okay, um, you have to differentiate yourself. High growth entrepreneur is basically you establish a very solid system or business function in the company. You are the team tak? You tak boleh nak, uh, tak apalah HR, uh, kita nak proses gaji. I lah buat, I, I kan founder. I buat lah tak ada masalah. Nak proses gaji senang je, pakai Excel pun boleh. Uh, maybe then kita pun um, cakap okay lah we do. Alright, and then the second one, nak prepare account. Oh, tak apa. It's okay. We don't have to prepare our accounting report and so on. We can just skip all the, you know, invoices, billing yang kita ada, payment, bank statement. Kita bagi je, outsource je dekat accountant luar untuk buat. Okay, we don't want to do that. Number one, kita tak ada skill. Number two is, that's not our task lah to do it. Ataupun, tak payahlah ada accounting and finance record. It's not important. Okay, uh, that will fall you under the other category of, of entrepreneur. Okay, and then yang ketiganya adalah, you do really care about you uh, being um, you know um, good brand in the market tak payahlah nak brand-brand kita jual je ada customer that will book it, that will be good enough kita kalau kita dapat menjual that is already a success for us uh, sebab nak menjual bukan senang nak jual satu unit dua unit bukan senang so the moment ada orang nak membeli tu why not you just be grateful uh, macam itulah so um, you pun tend to be like uh, as long as I ada customers tak apa cukup dah uh, you, so we want to stop stop there okay and then menjual pula bila nak packing the fulfillment semua-semua tu uh, kita cari je part timer kalau time order ada order banyak kita hire lah part timer nanti kita ajar je dia orang nak print courier sheet lepas tu tampal dekat uh, flyers and then post lah minta JNT ataupun any shipping companies to come and collect then that is where we stop okay and then kita pun dapat duit dalam account kita and then we are very happy, okay, kita boleh tolong family and so on. So, we thought that that is what the business should be. Okay, uh, dapat sales and then kita boleh guna duit tu untuk kita punya well-being, tolong family sikit, uh, buat sedekah sikit. So, we thought that is finished there. But then, for someone who are, who are um, having the mindset of establishing a high growth business, you may have different kind of thinking. Right, kind of thinking in a way, number one, you set up business untuk siapa? Kalau you set up business untuk you, okay, so like myself last time, I cakap dengan my husband, I don't want lah to buat business, I dah tak larat dah, I nak kerja je makan gaji, dah cukup dah gaji yang I dapat. Contoh macam tu lah, I cakap. Uh, and then, bila dah buat, eh banyak pula duit masuk. So, I macam, okay, I nak buat business ni untuk I ke? Untuk another group. Untuk another, another group. But then I set up, uh, I said, even kalau I bagi uh, entrepreneurship training pun, I always mention that the business is not for you alone. Okay, the business is basically we want to build a good community out of our business. Community in a way, you boleh tak create jobs and the moment you make a hiring, you punya staff ada career advancement tak? Kalau tak, dia kerja dengan you sekadar makan gaji. So, macam mana kita nak develop the nation? So, I have that in mind in a way. Your business should be a platform where you set up satu platform where you produce a very professional community. Macam itulah. So, uh, I make sure that dalam company I, I ada uh, business unit yang betul. I ada marketing 
department, I ada accounting and finance department, I ada operation uh, team and warehouse department, I ada retail department, I ada uh, HR department, um, and I ada product development department and so on. So for that, I nak kena ada team yang banyak. Bila team yang banyak, kos dia tinggi. Okay, so daripada situ macam uh, you have to spend like 100,000 per month untuk nak bayar gaji staff yet kalau you tak buat semua tu, you boleh save tak? Kono lah kita akan guna ayat, you can save that 100,000 of being, uh, you know, of, of paying your your employees. Okay, but then your business tak akan grow because you don't have a good team. Okay, so contohlah branding and marketing. Okay, I rasa sepanjang I ber, uh, this business operated, um, sekali je I masuk TV. The rest is basically I just give it to my team and they do even better than me. Kadang-kadang kita, kita founder kan, kita rasa, oh come on, you should be, you know, at the limelight. Okay, because you are the founder, you have you have to always appear on the news and so on. Okay, but then sekali I masuk TV, sekali, uh, no, dua kali kot I masuk um, newspaper. Okay, the rest I just leave it to my staff. Okay, dia orang lah yang pergi station TV, they know better than me. Okay, so I just get my team to do that. Alright, so from there our branding started to grow. Okay, we start with TV Al-Hijrah lah at the time. And then masa tu kita pun macam is eh, nak bayar TV ni mesti mahal. Because we always thought like that. Actually no. Okay, so I'm very lucky in a way dalam I punya Instagram followers too. That's one is basically um, um, professional marketer lah. They, they basically connect the brand uh, with the TV station, okay, radio and so on. And then I managed to get a very good... um package, marketing package from them, from her juga. So that is where we started lah. Our first year, we spend almost 180,000 just for masuk TV dengan suat kabar je. So you you imagine some lifestyle entrepreneur, eh kenapa lah, I nak bayar banyak-banyak tu kan, tak payahlah. Uh, sampai 180,000, I can buy something else, I can buy handbag for example, okay. But then you spend that one because you know that your business can actually grow out of your marketing investment just now. Okay, some people don't see marketing as an invest, uh, marketing uh, uh, spending as an investment. Okay, so that is how I I, I started lah. Okay, I I said that I need this business to become a high growth one with, with the potential of being a high growth one. Okay, right, and then. Okay, so of, of course, um, because I have to, in today's session, I have to highlight juga apa challenges. Uh, challenges kita pada awal-awal uh, dulu macam I katalah because operated remotely in a way, you are the key person, you are a thousand miles away from your team and you are five hours behind them. Diorang nak tidur, uh, uh, dia lima jam uh, ke belakang, Saudi lambat lima jam. So, uh, diorang ni uh, dah start kerja, I tidur. Okay. Bila diorang dah habis waktu kerja, I baru nak bermula waktu kerja. So, that diorang sepanjang I dekat Saudi dulu, um, uh, four years, my team used to receive like, kalau morning je diorang bangun kan, penuh WhatsApp tu. Ha. Ada macam-macam tu. Uh, and then, boss being boss lah. Okay. Not, boss cannot be good all the times. Okay. So, there's so many things and everyone will basically receive message. And now, everyone is so happy because I'm in Brunei. Diorang macam, eh tak ada message lah daripada doktor. Doktor tak hantar message lah. Something like that. Okay. So, operate remotely is not easy since you are the key person. Okay. And then, even though I have my husband at the time, tapi dia, he's not entrepreneurial. He doesn't have any single entrepreneurial minds at all. But he could have. Okay, sebab dia ada PhD. Mungkin level of education dia lain sikit. Alright. Okay, so uh, the challenge was there to operate remotely susah. Okay, the communication sometimes uh, may be misinterpreted. Okay, and then our problem masa tu uh, short of stock lah. You hantar satu container, Saya sampai, boleh tak you all staff-staff ni suruh sikit stock? Saya tak ada stock dah nak menjual sebab nak tunggu lama. Kalau sekarang, okay, kita ship, two weeks dah sampai Port Kelang dah daripada Saudi. Masa COVID, you have to wait like six weeks untuk dapat stock. So, you imagine kalau you dah hantar satu kondena tu, uh, you nak tunggu lagi next, sementara nak tunggu enam minggu, you tak ada stock, what the business do? Do nothing. You cannot generate any income during that period. So, six weeks is too long, sebulan lebih. So, you are basically losing the cash inflow for six weeks. But you tak ada stock. Memang kita waktu tu, kalau kita kata tak ada stock, memang kita tak ada stock langsung dan kita tak boleh nak menjual anything. Tak ada apa-apa pun. So, short of stock were really crazy at the time, yet the demand is there. Kita nak ambil pre-order pun, uh, masa tu kita 
ambil kalau yang saya boleh ship guna Saudi Post je sebab Saudi Post seminggu dua minggu dah boleh sampai. Uh, tapi dia tak boleh banyak because Saudi Post are very costly. Okay. And then COVID-19 restriction pada waktu tu lah menyebabkan dia punya shipping delay and then bila dah sampai kat Port Klang pun prosesnya lama clearance and so on. So memang six week dia belayar saja the ship tu. Uh, apa the vessel. Alright and then dekat Port Klang can be like lama jugalah. Maybe seven to ten days juga. Sepatutnya one to two days dah boleh ni dah. So I had a lot of fight with our um, forwarding agent. Berapa kali I tukar forwarding agent. Uh, dan masa tu kita tak tahu pun proses import export ni macam mana nak buat clearance macam mana we we have no idea how to do that so that was the challenges yang you kena ada ilmu nak berniaga you simply selamba je you uh, apa export daripada Saudi masuk ke Malaysia and then the moment masuk Malaysia you don't know the regulation it's just that I have the networking kawan-kawan you are AI memang ramai kerja dengan uh, custom punya uh, custom and immigration officer so I just ask these people lah, how do I do this, how do I do, how do this lah. Okay, so nak kena study the compliance regulation are not easy. We thought that ah lah, kita buat ikut kita lah kan. Tak. You know the regulation that we have in Malaysia, kalau tak costly, ah uh, maksudnya tedious lah tu, complicated lah tu. So you have to to face this too. Uh, costly, kalau benda tu mudah tak apa. Costly, uh, tapi benda tu tak costly, tapi dia punya regulation dia susah, that's also problem. So, you have to be smart enough in understanding the government regulation before you involve with this kinds of import and export businesses lah. Nak export ke Malaysia pun uh, satu masalah because it's from Saudi kan. So, I have to know the regulation in Saudi juga. And the regulation in Saudi, dia tak akan ada selain daripada bahasa Arab dia. And you imagine the, doc the legal documentation in Arabic, Memang masalah lah, kalas lah saya boleh kata. So, you have to really have a good networking barulah you boleh export dan juga import dekat Malaysia nanti tu. So, that was the challenges that we had lah. So, I had a really horrible fight with the forwarding agent juga. We keep changing, changing until now everything is okay lah. We don't change anymore. Okay. And then, bila barang dah sampai ke warehouse. Warehouse masa tu, saya tak berani nak ambil um, warehouse yang... Um, Walaupun dekat Changlun, okay, saya tak berani pun nak ambil lower level punya warehouse. Sebab mahal kan, nak commit RM2,000, RM3,000 sebulan pun I I I don't think that our business could do lah at the, at the time. So, I being cheap sikit, okay, without thinking on my team at all waktu tu, okay, that was very bad uh, decision. I cakap, okay, you take the third floor. Lepas tu, that, that lot pula tak ada, tak ada apa, um, leave untuk nak lift up the, the 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 stocks and so on. So, tapi I ada dedicated team lah, warehouse team I. Tak apa, level 3 pun is okay. We just bring it up so that we can process the order. Yang tu je yang kita ada dalam kepala. Sampai je stock, kita nak process order. Macam tu lah. So, process order, everything were, were manual at the time. So, kita tak ada uh, skillful uh, operation uh, and also operation know-how lah to operate the system, macam mana nak mudahkan benda tu. So, I nak kena ambil masa study baru I boleh ajar ataupun educate I punya team Ah, kita ada sistem ni, kita pakai yang ni, yang ni, yang ni. So it takes time lah nak operate at the same time nak kena venture into the new system to make everyone easy untuk buat kerja. Okay and then improper um, warehouse and processing center and job and also lack of funding. Tadi kan bila short of stock, okay. Um, kita nak beli stock banyak, kita kena ada of course lah like one container uh, 40 foot to unit almost half million. Kalau macam sekarang dah boleh pergi sampai 600 ribu dah satu container 40 kaki because of the currency. Okay, so funding tak ada. Okay, bila funding tak ada, you nak grow, you akan stop. Uh, you 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 be stopped. Okay, you like it or don't like it, you be stopped. Your business can, you can order from the factory and factory pun tak boleh nak bagi you credit facilities because you still new. Okay, it just that now, memang uh, factory is okay with, with us now. Kadang-kadang uh, kalau kita order, kita tak bayar dulu pun uh, sampai dekat Port Klang baru kita bayar, is okay. Uh, but now, the moment sampai je dekat Port Klang, you have to make sure that you settle everything. Uh, macam tu lah. So, the funding wasn't there at the time until my second year I managed to um, get some um, investment lah from the investor okay that will be another story lah so this is how the business operated lah at the time okay um, our oper operation kalau you tengok tu ha courier sheet tu satu-satu-satu batu letak kat bawah tak ada proper station but then kita process thousands of orders juga we have to do it lah buat dekat rumah I and then we move to the warehouse this is our first container anyway 
Um, chip sikit, kita tak ada pakai ambassador ke apa semua. Second year, bila I dah ada marketing team and branding, barulah diorang ni come up with the ambassadors and so on. So, I pakai anak I je. Uh, he was five years old for at the time. Okay, so billboard I buat, um, pakai dia je. Um, tak ada proper photoshoot and so on. Okay, so this is the team that process the order and it was happened at my house juga waktu tu. And then this is how we arrange our sejadah. Oh, kalau I tengok balik, this one rasa macam... How funny you run the business lah, Wanda. Okay, so this is the boxes yang I kata uh, we have, I ship through Saudi Post. So, this is how it is. Satu box boleh muat 20 sejadah je. Um, so, satu sejadah tu dia punya shipping kau dah boleh pergi sampai 7 ke 8 real which is 10 ke 11 ringgit duit kita dah. Very costly. But then we don't have choice at the time. So, the packaging kita tak ada because our aim at the time we just want to become a reseller to the factory. So, maksudnya whatever factory produce, kita uh, ni je lah. Sekononnya in, in my mind at the time, uh, access to the asset is more important than owning the asset. Maksudnya, uh, tak apalah kalau you tak ada brand you sendiri pun you jual je because uh, kilang ni dia punya asset dia uh, brand Mada tu memang orang beli. So, I thought that that would be good enough lah. Um, apply that theoretical um, apa knowledge that I have to, uh, access to the asset um, is important than owning the asset. Sebenarnya, I tak mampu nak own the asset. So, that's why I kata access to the asset. I beli je lah new product and then I just sell it. Ha, macam tu lah. Okay, so uh, I try to become the model for the business. Oh my God, that was so bad but I want to share. Uh, kita tak ada hire talent ke apa ambassador apa semua-semua. So, uh, that was with my uh, friend. Um, uh, apa Hatifa okay she owns the outlet in in uh, the first one in in Kangal lah okay kalau you are pergi Kangal Jaya if you happen to be in Perlis that's one in front of um coffee bin maksudnya coffee bin so uh, the shop is belong to her so she said Wahida jomlah kita jadi talent <laughs> oh my god I was bad at that okay alright and then this is how we store our packaging kita letak dekat rumah dia dulu okay so memang tak ada proper one lah tapi nak jadi high growth entrepreneur alright <laughs> Okay, and then uh, this is where we move. We build a strong foundation in a way that um, I will make sure that whoever with me, um, they have to make sure that the vision of the business, the direction of the business is there and you are the one who are responsible to make sure that it is achieved. Um, so, I punya team I, I think I had a good team lah. I had a design. Designer, I boleh je. Kalau I tak nak, I hire freelance je. But freelance, they are not working with us. They don't know the identity of our our uh, companies, okay, what brands that we are into, what branding strategy that we are into in. So, I hire lah, I, I punya team yang solid lah, okay, yang kat bawah ni is basically my warehouse team, yang dekat atas ni is basically my management team. I split my team into two lah, management and, and warehouse, okay. Alright, and then... um. So, strategy um, for growth, uh, macam itulah, um, that's a business cycle lah. This is going to be very theoretical. I'm not going to explain, okay, apa benda nak kena buat. But this is the thing that you have to have in order to make sure that your business grow. Kalau tak, you will end up yourself to become just a sales manager. Uh, businessman, uh, sorry, salesman sahaja. Maksudnya, you menjual, you habis kat situ, okay. Um, businessman is different, okay. Alright, so how do I overcome the setback? I already cerita tadi, uh, kalau kita process order manual, I can systemize lah. Uh, after all, macam mana I boleh, uh, masih boleh survive uh, monitoring the business remotely because everything is systemized. I trust technology so much. Okay, kalau I tak ada orang yang boleh tolong um, suggest I, Wahida, you should use this system, this system, I memang akan study sendiri. I study sendiri, contoh inventory management system. Wahida, how do you link your inventory so that the moment your staff key in the sale, it directly make your inventory move. Okay, and then you tak payah nak buat satu-satu. So, I study sendiri the system. The moment I study sendiri, I try to buat and then I bagi briefing sikit. I'm very educational leader. Tadi I cakap. Jadi, I dah study sikit. I know how the system works. I know what reporting that the system can do. How, uh, what what output it produce. I will make briefing to my team. Uh, this is how it is. Tapi, I provide basic sahaja. You, the system works like this. Okay, lepas tu, I lepas je dekat diorang. Uh, you pandai lah later. You let me know what this system, what this technology, what this application can do. Okay, so but then my team 
So far Alhamdulillah That are very good Okay I bagi sikit je But then you buat And then the moment I tengok apa ni Sistem ni tak boleh nak Produce this 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 um, Then I will try to figure out Apa yang ada Dekat sistem ni Yang sepatutnya boleh dibuat Tapi I punya team tak tahu Macam tu lah Alright And then uh, We also have When we After COVID is over Memang benda tu um, is actually affected us jugalah We have the sales drop And also because Our, our business model Relying on dropship Okay, so a dropshipper masa during COVID, they are very active. I think everyone know that. Okay, but then after COVID over, everyone nak kena kerja balik dah get back to work and so on. So because of that, our sales drop juga. So that is where we move instead of focusing on the B2B alone, we have to focus on B2C as well where we set up our outlet. So uh, kita set up outlet, kita at the end of the second year lah basically. Uh, no, um, at the end of second year ke early of the year, macam tu lah. Okay, so we set up the outlet, okay, so that we can reach our retail customers by ourselves rather than relying on our um, dropshippers because kita dalam sistem kita walaupun kita ada agent dropship, we never set the KPI. Eh, hey, you jadi agent, I, you kena pastikan tau you menjual ini ni. I never do that because you know, Business cannot be by force. Okay, if they want to do, they do. If they don't want to do, we cannot force. Macam tu lah. Okay, and then the limited tag tu, I I know there are a lot of good system that can help the SMEs actually to perform better. So, it's just that you as a founder, as a leader in that organization, you know or not that system exists or not and you know how to use or not. Macam tu lah, kalau you tak tahu, you kena belajar. I attended sometimes the training so that I can learn. All right? And then um, I have to be strategic in terms of, uh, you know, do fundraising and so on. And then how do I pay back the investor and so on. Okay, where that one, I don't pass it to my team to do it lah. Okay, this is my responsibility. So I have to know how to deal with it. Okay, and then uh, limited finance. Okay, until we manage to get the fund from the May bank and so on. Okay, so our relationship with the banks um, is, is good so far. Especially May bank. Okay, and then in my company at the time, we don't have the... Think tanker. The tanker I saw wrong So it's basically one man show lah. And I'm not good enough as well to to grow the the company. So there always a limitation where we keep improving. Okay, but I think uh, my my team is aware about that. Okay, all right. And then whatever it is, okay. Um, I want to share this. Okay. Um, being a Muslim, so I believe that all of us is 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 Muslim here. Okay. Whatever that we do, kalau Allah kata, I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to achieve this. It will never, never come to you. Okay. It's because I said it's in uh, accidental in a way that Wahida, Allah wants to give it to you. Okay. But this is a test. Okay. This is a test on how you cope with this. And then when you have this business, how this business can actually provide betterment, kindness, uh, okay, provide um, positive uh, impact to the community because the business is not for you. You said in your mind that the business is not for you. This is not an individualistic punya vision. This is where you want to make sure that your business do have positive impact to the community, to the stakeholder that you have, okay, around around your business, okay. So, um, after all, I know that the business is, is, is from Allah and it's a test, it's a test. So, whatever that I have, I, kalau I ada apa-apa masalah dalam company, I the most relaxed one. I pernah kena saman satu juta dekat, um, um, Saudi, okay, um, by my friend because of this business juga, but I'm not going to tell you in, the, in details lah, but I can say that I lost 1,020, 20, oh, sorry, 1,020,000 ringgit Malaysia equivalent to, okay, uh, I lost the case, two weeks, turun naik, turun naik mahkamah, I kalah, okay, but then, macam my mother said lah, kalau, kalau dia lah, dia kata, Dah mati, hidup balik, mati, hidup balik. Kita akan mampu nak face benda ni. Okay, macam tu lah. But then I pun, what else we have? Okay, but what else we have? So I minta je dengan Tuhan. I kata, please give me kebijaksanaan yang paling luar biasa. Keuangan yang luar biasa yang I boleh go through. And I know I can go through because this business is not just come, come macam tu je for me. Okay, there must be some test. Okay, it's a test. It's a test. The business is a test. So, macam mana I nak cook benda ni? So, for the, within that two years, I'm not allowed to leave the Saudi. So, that's why if some of you uh, notice, uh, I don't know, I have friends who are not coming here, but you will realize that, oh, uh, I'm not out, okay, from Saudi for the for two years because I'm being banned to go out from Saudi until I finish the case and so on. So, um, setiap hari, I punya doa I yang tu je. Bukan minta Tuhan, Tuhan bagilah I sejuta, dua juta supaya I boleh settlekan. I tak pernah minta doa. I need the cash money. Never. Okay, never. But I pray to God that 
uh, bagi I kebijaksanaan yang luar biasa so that I can face this one and make this test as the best that I can face so that I will become a better version of myself. Macam tu je. So, two years, ya Allah, lamanya bila Tuhan nak makbulkan doa I kan, you pergi umrah every month, you pergi Masjid Nabawi every two weeks, every time you go to Masjid Nabawi, you go to Raudah. Masa dulu Raudah tu, you nak duduk berapa lama pun, you go lah, tak ada orang dekat Raudah tu. Kau doa lah sebanyak mana yang kau nak, Waida. Alright, and then, um, um, every time, hari Jumaat, Uh, waktu mustajab lepas asar sampai ke maghrib tu I rasa I dah boleh dengar dah loceng Kalau dekat Masjid Nabawi sebelum nak Setengah jam sebelum nak masuk waktu maghrib Dia akan ada ting bunyi Itu adalah golden hours untuk you berdoa I dah boleh ingat dah benda tu And I miss that so much Waktu tu jangan siapa kacau I Doa lah nak cakap Two years tu doa biarlah I boleh lalui Siapa nak lalui nak kena bayar one million cash kan Okay so that's totally out of my mind lah masa tu to deal with but I know given with the faith that we have kita strong enough uh, strong reliance lah to our creator we know that I believe in this um, verses uh, Quranic verses where Allah say la yukallifullah nafsan illa wusaha maksudnya Tuhan dia tak akan bagi kita ujian yang memang kita tak mampu mungkin orang lain Tuhan bagi ujian dia kena bayar 10 ribu dan dia rasa macam ya Allah 10 ribu mana nak dapat tapi mungkin Tuhan kata, no, you punya level 1 million, Wahida. So, this is your level. You have to deal with it. So, masa haji pun, doa lah kita bila Tuhan nak bagi kita kemampuan untuk jalan keluar. So, I minta jalan keluar. Walaupun jalan keluar tu bukan jalan keluar yang memberikan I happiness. I know that I'm going to lose the case. So, the moment I tahu I'm going to lose the case, I strategize myself dalam buat doa. I kata, just give me the way out doesn't matter it is uh, at the expense of whatever cash that i have i kata it's okay as long as i ada jalan keluar because i don't want to face this this anymore so i i tahu jalan keluar yang i ada tu adalah jalan keluar at the expense of my cash money all right Memang at the expense of my cash money lah basically. Tapi ada jalan keluar but at least you are happy in a way that walaupun sukar untuk kita nak Jalan keluar tu sukar tapi at you have the way out. Ha, macam tu lah. So whatever problems yang kita ada, uh, the way out is there. That will be good enough. Okay. And then um, kita punya kena, reliance lah. Uh, kita punya kebergantungan kepada Allah is definitely um, should be like bukan 1,000% bukan. 1 million percent should be that. Saya dalam apa-apa dalam hidup saya, saya kalau terlepas flight lima kali kan, saya biasa je. Saya tak ada apa. Saya terlepas flight lima kali je. Eh, lima kali dalam satu hari. Saya pernah terlepas flight lima kali, saya okey. Saya tak apa. Nanti kita, okey saya saya memang relax. Saya memang tenang dalam semua benda. Uh, kalau ni uh, orang kerja-kerja contoh lah. Kadang kan kita lambat sikit lah nak bayar uh, bank punya uh, loan kan. Uh, saya paling tenang sebab saya tahu nanti akan ada lah tuduk masuk. So semua benda tenang lah saya ni. Semua benda pun saya tenang. Uh, sampai kan saya menghadapi yang that one million pun tenang sebab apa I know that's always um, Allah is always with us lah okay Allah uh, karibun kan so maksudnya Allah is with us at any state tak kisahlah you senang you susah Allah is with you huh? so I always have that in mind but that will be very important things for us as an entrepreneur especially if you are Muslim we don't have that one no matter how much your business grow you tak ada yang tu you ada masalah you cannot cope it uh, macam tu lah Okay, so what is it needed? So I think later guys, later you guys would want to ask me, but I just highlight here lah. What is it needed as an entrepreneur? I put faith as the first one because I believe this is the the, the first thing that we have to have lah. Um, Tuhan bagi kita um, Quran, okay, kita baca tak? And then bila kita baca, kita cuba tak nak memahami. Because everything written in the Al-Quran, if we really understand, we do tadabur, we know that is how it is really related to our daily life. So I have that belief. Uh, I'm very happy to be, um, you know, um, alumni of IIUM, okay, in a way that I tak belajar semua ni kalau bukan sebab I student UIA. So, I have that in a way that I pernah belajar tadabur and so on dekat UIA dulu. Kalau tak, I don't know where do I going to learn lah macam tu. Okay, so that that's that's the thing. Alright, um, I think dah habis 10. I don't want to drag time walaupun seminit. Thank you very much. I pass over to you, host. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Wahida. May Allah grant you with a good health so that you can directly benefit from your wisdom. As someone from the younger generation, I have learned a lot for the past one hour so that, uh, of course, our participants too. 
Alhamdulillah, we gladly uh, we have approximately 250 participants today in Zoom, also in YouTube. Now, we will proceed with the Q&A session. This is the question from the audience, from Encik Suhaimi Muhammad Sharif. Assalamualaikum, Puan. Do you have a plan to nurture other people into this kind of high growth of entrepreneurship? For example, turn police into an entrepreneurship state. Um, sorry, can you repeat again? I tak focus. <laughs> sorry. So the question is, do you have a plan to nurture other people into this kind of high growth of entrepreneurship? Mm, okay. Um, that's always my agenda. Okay, that's always my personal agenda. Okay, in a way. Um, kalau you all pernah dengar lah, Tun M selalu kata, orang bumi putera kita um, tak achieve uh, maksudnya tak berjaya. Uh, walaupun sekarang kita kata, eh ramai je bumi putera kita berjaya kan. Tapi we always uh, have that even recently. Okay. Kalau if you guys um, apa uh, listen to the podcast uh, keluar sekejap, Tun M masih with that mentality. Okay. So I have that in mind in a way that first thing, okay, kita punya entrepreneurs dia kena tahu what is it needed, okay, what is it needed and what it takes to have the high growth punya businesses, okay? Because high growth businesses ni is another level. So, kita memang ada uh, government institution that come up with the training and so on. Tapi that training, I don't know, it doesn't fit what, you know, what the high growth entrepreneur needs, okay? So, uh, I tak tahu the, the agenda that the government have right now, okay? But me on a personal basis, Every time siapa-siapa jumpa I, okay, um, seeking the advisors, I always set. Soalan pertama I akan tanya, what level of businesses you nak buat dulu? You nak biasa-biasa relax-relax ataupun you nak high growth? Because high growth is another game lah. But I have that lah. I have that in mind. In fact, I already set up my own um, entrepreneurship consultancy firm. Okay, in a way, um, kalau I dah retire because I will be retiring in two years, insyaAllah, I set my timeline. I will be retiring from the academics um, at the age of 40, which is two, another two years right so one of the things that i want to do at a personal level is basically um, having my entrepreneurship um, academy um, where it's basically like non-profit okay um to inculcate the upper uh, to acculturate lah basically the high growth entrepreneurs punya mindset okay i hope that i answered the question by chick so i just now okay thank you prof so I mean for the question second question for dr wahida um, if we want to order the prayer mat as a corporate gift, so what is the minimum number for the order? Ah, uh, okay. Um, you mean the corporate order, ka? Tu dah jadi ni business oh, order yeah. Corporate uh, gift, yeah. Uh, corporate order. Okay, wait. I have to confirm. This is my problem because when you pass everything to your staff, but I think the minimum order is hundred fifty pieces for the corporate order. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it's okay. I can connect to my team lah. Okay, they 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 can help. Okay, but if to buy retail, um, you can just buy from the website or our outlet store. But as far as I know, I think the minimum order is hundred fifty pieces. You can mix the sejada, alright. And we've also ada product like fragrances, ke tasbih. Ke. You can mix as long as it is hundred fifty pieces. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, so I would like to open for any question, if there's any. Okay. So this is a question from Encik Ahmad Usman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Puan. Since you are from an academic background, since you are from the an academic background in addition to being an entrepreneur, I would appreciate your advice on where to search for teaching business and administration to pharmacy students. All the corporate functions such as HR, finance and others. I am from pharmacy background and non-Malay speaker. Oh, non-Malay speaker? Oh my God. I'm sorry. I didn't know. That's my problem because normally kind the PNP2 is all Malay speaker. Oh, I'm sorry. What is his name just now? Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Osman, kan? Ahmed Osman. Okay, okay. Um, alright, I'm, I'm sorry, okay. Um, okay, regarding your question, uh, you say where to search for teaching um, business. What is it? 
where to search for teaching business and administration to <laughs> to pharmacy student okay where to search for teaching business and administration to pharmacy students um i think there are a lot of okay uh, if it government agencies of course they have they have so many um trainings that one lah but if you if you want something that is customized to your pharmacy um, businesses, all right, um, you really have to find mentor. Okay, if you ask me, I will always say that you have to find a mentor uh, that can basically customize whatever that you need to know. Okay, because is 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 um for example in pharmacy care, you need to know oh, who is the existing uh, player in the market. For example, so you cannot go to the general uh, training entrepreneurship training because they cannot cater you okay they cannot cater your 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 question okay your whatever that you need to know okay so you have to find a mentor but i'm not sure i believe in in edc uh, they have they have mentors lah kan to 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 they, they provide mentors i think okay but then if you want to ask me okay i'm not into pharmaceutical punya sector juga but if you just want to know about um whatever needed lah like the corporate function hr finance and others too um, it's general ja. You can either Google, okay, because I always trust Google, okay. Um, not chat GPT, Google, okay. And then they will just highlight, okay, which one is the best one for you to use lah, okay. HR ke, finance accounting software ke. There are a lot now available. And you can just shop around uh, which one provide you better um, um, specification and better cost as well for you to pay, okay. Better subscription lah, basically. I need to deliver them a course. Oh, I see. Okay, we talk later lah. We talk between two later. Okay, if you want to provide the training, maybe we can park on the consultant, our, my consultancy firm. Okay, Dr. Ahmad, Dr. Ka. Can I read the question? So here? the next question uh, is, what is the minimum budget to be the reseller for the prayer mat? Oh, okay. No, we don't have. We don't charge anyone. Um, you want to become the reseller for the prayer mat, you can just go to our website, okay? Um, if you go to the prayermatofficial.com, you, uh, you see um, the menu bar up um, affiliate, okay? So you can just sign up there through affiliate or if you go to the prayermatmalaysia.com, you can just uh, click uh, become our reseller but no fees charge, okay? We don't charge um, any fees to become our reseller, okay? It is free for everyone as long as you join our community, that's fine already. And you will be supplied with all the materials, um, okay, uh, the pictures, the videos, okay, the testimonials um, in our Telegram group, okay? Uh, it's everything is there in the on, on the website. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Waida. Okay. Welcome. No more questions then. Yeah. No we more questions. At ten o'clock, correct? Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Distinguished guests, the QR code displayed on the screen is for anyone who wants to register their business with us so that we can provide you with first business training, opportunities to participate in campus festivals listed in EDC business directory and free promotion within IIM community. Um, we have a question there Okay, from Muhammad Nur Shakiri. Is it running ads? Okay, where is the chat just now? It's gone. Yeah, is it running? Is it running ads will work for gaining customer? Ah, okay. Is it running ads will work for gaining customer? Um, I think my team did. Okay, and it works. All right, it, it really works. Okay, it really works. Um, number one, you will be directed to the organic punya customers, okay? Um, depending on how you set, lah, like if you use ChatGPT, for example, with the correct prompt, you will be directed with a very good output, can? So same thing, the moment you run ads, okay, um, with the correct audience, okay, um, you will basically directed to the organic customer because we accumulate our retail customers from apps as well. So my marketing team are doing that. Um, I think it really works. Lah. So it's just that um, it's quite costly. The running ads through Facebook, Instagram, Google ads is actually costly. But then 
um, you are directed to the organic customer. It works, okay? Um, that's why I said marketing is an investment, okay? All right, thank you, Dr. Wahida. We have closed the uh, Q&A session. So, distinguished guests, the QR code displayed on the screen is for anyone who wants to register their business with us so that we can provide you with business training, opportunities to participate in campus festival, listed in EDC business directory, and free promotion within IUM community. Okay. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite Madam Rosnani, Director uh, from the Entrepreneurship Development Centre, to give a speech. Please welcome. Okay, hi, Maida, and all participants for this program. Thank you for joining this program, and thank you, Dr. Waida. Actually, saya kat Jepun ni clear. I see. Clear dan bersemangat dengar. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so, insyaAllah kita... Okay, banyak lagi lah kot collaboration kita boleh buat. Banyak lagi talk kita boleh panggil insyaAllah. And just want to say thank you. Thank you for your time today. And thank you for inspiring talk lah untuk hari ni. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have fun in in Japan. Okay, I didn't uh. know you were there. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time juga. I supposed to say thanks to you because uh. you spend your time to... To my, I, I hope it's insightful lah. Okay, I, yeah. I know personally, yeah, our all too, I know personally lah. But then I don't know. I hope the sharing is good lah. Okay. I believe that IUM sangat berbangga lah ada alumni macam Dr. Waida dan yang lain-lain lah yang ni kan. Saya tolong bawa nama UAE semua. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay, alright. That's always my proud to be IUM alumni. <laughs> okay. Right, thank okay. you, Madam. Okay. Thank you, yeah. And thank you, Dr. Waida. With that, we have come to an end of the session. Before that, I would like to remind all participants to fill in the evaluation form for this session. You can click on the link provided in the chat box. May Allah continue to provide us with His guidance and protection. To all participants, please be informed that the next Breakthrough Business Mind Talk will be held on 9 February, featuring Dr. Waida and the founder, so the prayer mat will be taking about insights into entrepreneurship and success. Thank you again, everyone, for joining the session. We end with Tasbih Kafara and Surah Al-Az. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, everyone. I would like to remind again, don't forget to fill the evaluation form for this session. Thank you. Can you advise where is the evaluation form? Because we can't find the link here. Yeah, we have provided the link in the chat box. Yeah, in the, yeah. we are looking at the chat box, but I don't think I can find it. Can you re-share? Okay, sure. Thank you. I think quite a number are asking about the um, the link to the evaluation form. Can't be found. Uh, sorry. Okay, I have resigned. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much.